صلی علی محمد و آل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اللهم اینی ابتسف سنا بحمدت و انت مسجد للسواب ببنت و اقنت انك انت عرم الرحمین في موز العفة والرحمة وأشد المعاقبين في موز النكال والنقمة وأعظم المتجبرين في موز الكبرياء والغزمة اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سمي ومدهتي واجب يا رحيم دعوتي واقن يا غفور اسرتي فكم يا الهي من قربه قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها واسره قد اقلتها ورحمه قد نشرتها والقتب لا قد فكتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتقن صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل فكبر التكبير الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع معاملي كلها على جميع نعمي كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مزاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عزمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده وحمد الزهر بالكرم مجدو الباسد بالجود يده الذي لا تنخذ خزائنه ولا تزيد كسرة عطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير ما حاجة بي إلي عظيمة غن وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كسين وهو عليك السهر يسين اللهم إني عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وصفك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيه عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي وأطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجب من الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وأريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فسرت أدوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبتأ عني أطبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبتأ عني هو خير لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أرمى المولى كريما أسفر على عبد الله من منك علي يا رب إنك تدوني فوا لعنك وتتحبب إلي فأتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي تطول عليك فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمن والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارهم عبدك الجاهل وجد علي بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك المول مجر الفول مسخر الرياء فالق الاسباب ديان الدين رب العالمين
الحمد لله مالك المول مجر الفول مسخر النيا فالق الاسماء ديانا الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول عناته في غزبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرز فالق الاسماء ذي الجلال والاكرام والفضل والانعام الذي بعد فلا يغى وقلب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له ملاذ يعدله ولا شبيه يشاكل ولا زهير يعزد قهر بعزة العزة وتوازى لعزمة العزماء وبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني هنا أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا عاصي ويعزم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعزيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأسني عليك حامدا واذكره مسبعا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك هجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن القائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستدفين ويزغ المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستقلف آخرين والحمد لله القاسم الجبارين مبيد الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موزيك حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسمع في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويتم ولا يتعب ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد إلى عير وصيام شرم صارم فرس تزجر مسيان كل ضرم خطا كردم مرا رسوا نكردي بلطف رحمة أمي دوارم خدايا دارد من دير و سيام سراب و غرق دار يا يقنام زر أحمد قر اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك 
وأمينك وسفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفزل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنمى وأتيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما سليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وسفمتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على آلين أمير المؤمنين ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبي العظيم وسل على صديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وسل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وسل على أمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف العادي المهدي وجدك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك ثلاثة كثيرة دائما اللهم وسل على ولي أمرك القائم المعمل والعدل المنتظر وحفظه بملائكتك المقربين ويهدوا بروء القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفوا في الأرض كما استخلفت الذي منه من قبلك وكن له دين والذي ارتزيته له أبد له من بعد خوف آمنا يعبدك يشرك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم عز وعزز به وانتصر وانتصر به وانصر نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتح يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نسيرا اللهم ازئر بي دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتزل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا بفيا من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فمن الله وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المهم بي شعسنا واشعب بي سدعنا وارتق بي فتقنا وكسر بي قلتنا وعزز بي زلتنا واغن بي عائلنا واقز بي المغرمنا 
واجبر بي فقرنا وسد بي خلتنا ويسر بي يسرنا وبيز بي وجوهنا وفك بي يسرنا وانجح بي طلبتنا وانجز بي مواعيدنا واستجب بي دامتنا وعتنا بي سؤلنا وبلغنا بي من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وعتنا بي فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وعوص المعتين اشف بي صدورنا واذهب بي غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا بي لمختلف في من الحق بإذنك إنك تادي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا بي على عدوك مع دونا إلى الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا سلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكسرة دونا وقلة دننا وشدة الفتن بنا وتزاور الزمان علينا فصل على محمد والي وعنا على ذلك بفتح من تعجل وبذر تكشف ونسر تعز وسلطان حق تظهر ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوات على محمد وآل محمد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the chance and the tawfiq to be at Masjid al Rasul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our fasting, our prayers, and all of our efforts, inshallah. Again, one more time on behalf of myself and on behalf of our board, I would like to extend my condolences to family of Al Ammara upon losing. Uh, kind mother-in-law and uh, grandmother, uh, sister Hajia Masuma Abdul Wahid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her soul, have mercy on her, and shower her with his mercy, inshallah, and grant her the highest level in Jannah, inshallah. For the soul of sister Hajia Masuma uh, Abdul Wahid, please recite the salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, with that being said, um, our month of Ramadan programs will end this Monday, inshallah, so three more nights. The masjid will host and we will be the guests. Uh, and we want to give you one night, uh, day of Tuesday, to have iftar with your families at your own home. And also we can prepare the masjid for the next day for Eid al-Fitr, inshallah. Uh, for the Eid al-Fitr, uh, as far as when the prayers will be, I will announce those tomorrow once we conclude it and see what time is going to be the best. But usually it's going to be around 8, but I have to check with the Mudaris, inshallah. And we'll give you the exact timing, the exact timing tomorrow night, inshallah, until Monday night. Uh, with that said, also, our... Taha Islamic School is open tomorrow, my brothers and sisters. If you have students in Taha Islamic Academy, please drop them off tomorrow timely. Uh, the school starts at 9.30, so at five, 10 minutes before that, that will be a good time to drop off your student. Uh, with that being said, um, I would like to take this opportunity and also thank all our volunteers, all brothers and sisters who are 
working tirelessly and serving everybody with their best of hospitality that they can. Um, of course, there are some shortcomings, but the, for the most part, I think we are doing great. Everybody is happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all ajah and tawab, inshallah. Nobody is getting paid for what they are doing. So for volunteers, it's a great job. And when I'm saying this, it's from our chef, from their all brothers and sisters, the two brothers who are taking care of your monthly donations, and also our brother in the back room who's uh, taking care of the sound and online programs. Everybody is doing a great job. Uh, so let's recite another salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad for all of our volunteers. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And of course, all of these programs will not happen without having Aji Aga Mudaris. He is doing such a great job, especially from yesterday. He's been working, I think, 24 7 for going to Bejta Zahra for that burial, and then two majalises of Fatiha, having speeches, one before Iftar and one after Iftar. I'm sure it uh, takes a lot of time, a lot of research to do this. It's not easy. So for the help of Ajala Madaris and his family, another salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, so now I'm going to ask Ajala Madaris for another speech. Uh, the title of the speech is The Continuation of Prophet Ibrahim, a One Man Nation. Am I forgetting something? No, I think we covered pretty much everything. Uh, the title of tonight's speech is the continuation of Prophet Ibrahim, a one-man nation. And now I respectfully welcome Ajah Mudaris to Manbat. For the health of Ajah Mudaris again, Prasad Allah, Salawat. Allah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For the soul of all marhumin, for all the mu'mineen and mu'minat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better those who volunteered, those who donated, those who make sure that this Masjid and the programs are going. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the khair, the good of dunya and akhirah, and bless their marhumin. For all of them, especially for the recent marhumin, especially for uh, marhuma hajiya ma'asuma abdul wahid, let's recite the surah fatiha with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi rajoon. Our condolences to Alamara family. Uh, again, Hajj Farzad did this multiple times. I'm, I'm thankful for the words he said, but the reason this program is going is because of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, of course, all the mu'mineen and mu'minat who are doing the work. I'm the one in front of the camera and in front of the mic, but without their efforts, it wouldn't be possible. May Allah give them khair of dunya and akhirah. And Allah knows, as I said, at the end of the day, our efforts are evaluated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What people see and what people think is respected and good uh, is good, but the one that matters actually is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, Allah accept from everyone from the beginning of this month and for the remainder of our lives if we do any work. To be maqbool and accepted, let's aside another salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله الذي لا بداية له والدائم الذي لا نفاد له والأول الذي لا أول لأوليته والآخر الذي لا مؤخر لآخريته ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وحبيبه حافظ سره ومبلغ رسالاته حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين واللعن الدائم على عدائم عداء الله أجمعين من الآن إلى لقاء يوم الدين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم فبشرناه بغلام حليم فلما بلغ معه السعي قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا أبا تفعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين صدق الله العلي العظيم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten our heart by the light of iman, guidance, certainty, and yaqeen, and help us to pass this stage of doubt and skepticism and shak. And may Allah help us to cleanse our soul from the corruption of kuf, disbelief, and misguidance with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I probably spent five minutes explaining the rules of Zakat al-Fitr in Farsi, but I will get to the English one, because we had a long day for everyone. I'm not going to do two lectures as, as I usually do on weekends. So I'm just going to go over the simple rulings of Zakat al-Fitr, part of it, in Farsi, and I will cover that in English as well, inshallah. Ahkam Zakat al-Fitr, nazik mishim be ruz eid al-Fitr, بارها هم خب الحمد لله اکثرا شنیدیم ولی بازم بعضی از قوانینش رو اگر مرور بکنیم تکرار بکنیم خالی از فایده نخواهد بود از جمله ای که در شب عید فطر حالا میگن در غروب حالا این غروب منظور غروب شرعی است یا شب است خلاصه میگیم شب در شب عید فطر واجب می شود بر کسی که ناناور خانواده است کسی که خرجی خانواده یا هر کسی را حتی غریبه رو اگر بدهد هر کسی که نانخور دارند زکات فطر بر او واجب می شود که هم زکات فطر خود را بپردازد و هم از نانخورهای خودش را یک سلوات نهر I'm getting old for this I used to be able to concentrate no matter how many distraction. Now, I can see that it's getting difficult and difficult. So, I do my best still. شب عید فت واجب می شود که انسان چه مقدار زکات بدهد. زکات فت یک نوع زکات است. ما چون زکات انواع مختلفی دارد واجب هم هست. یه مزد زکات های واجب هست. بعضی از زکات مستحب است مثل صدقه ای که ما می دهیم اما ما داریم که شرط قبولی روزه ما رمضان این زکات فطر است یعنی کسی که مکمل روزه گرفتن این زکات دادن هست مبلغش هم به پول و پیسه و اینها نیست بلکه به قضا هست مقدارش هم سه کیلوگرم که میگن یک ساع به زبان عربی ساع میشه سه کیلو که سه کیلو هم وقتی تبدیل به پاوند بکنیم میشه 6.6 تو 6.7 شیش اشاره یک هفت شیش پوند و هفت دهم پوند حالا هرچی که هست از قضایی که رایج است در شهری که ما زندگی میکنیم یعنی حالا اگر گندم هست اگر جو هست اگر خورما هست انسان باید او قضا رو زکات بدهد ولی وقتی که فقیر در دسترس نیست اکثرا 
هزینه یا پولمون پیسه اون 6 کیلو رو تبدیل میکنن و میفرستن حالا جایی که قرار است خریداری بشود پس وقتی همیشه میپرسن آقا زکات فت امسال چقدر هست و هی میگیم چرا بالا پایین است چون زکات فطر اصلا قرار نیست پول باشد زکات فت قرار بوده خوراکی باشد و به خاطر که ارزش خوراکی ها فرق میکند شما همی الان وقتی میگیم گندم یا میگیم آرد ما الان آرد داریم از پنجا سنت تا یک دلار و چار دلار و پنج دلار دست شما داریم وقتی میگیم شیش کیلو ببخشیم سه کیلو اگه منظور آرد باشد خب ارزانتر است اگه منظور خورما باشد خب گرانتر است اگه منظور برنج باشد باز قیمت ها فرق میکند از این جهت است که شما رقم های مختلف میشتم یک نفر میگه زکات فت هفت دلار است یکی میگه ده دلار است یکی میگه پانزده است او دیگه اختیار دست شما شما خود شما میتونید حساب کتاب کنید ببینید همیشه در خانه چه چیزی خرید میکنین از گندم آرد قرما برنج ارزشش رو ببینید سه کیلو ارزشش چقدر است میشود زکات فطر شما دفتر آقای سیستانی امسال اعلام کردن ده دلار ما سر سال تخمینی که زدن گفتن ده دلار من میشه میگم پانزده حساب کنین چرا چون در استیت به استیت بعضی وقتا ارزش ها فرق میکنه خوراکی هم فرق میکنه اگر توانایی داریم بیشتر بدیم پانزده بهتر است اما بین ده تا پانزده است اما اگر شما گفتم بخواین با آرد ارزان قیمت هم حساب کنید شاید تا پنج شیش دلار هم بتوانین قیمتش رو بگین ولی به شرطی که از او گندم خود شما هم بخورین خورده باشین اگر کسی وقتی میگیم نانخور داشته باشد ولو نانخورش مسلمان نباشد ولو کافر باشد بعد شما زکات فطر او رو بدهید طفل صغیر یک روزه باشد بعد زکات فطرش رو بدهید طفلی که هنوز به دنیا نامده زکات فطر ندارد اما بچه که به دنیا آمد چه روزه بگیرد چه روزه نگیرد زکات فطر بر انسان واجب است هر کسی که شما خرجش رو میدهید فرض کنیم فرزند شما در شهر دیگه زندگی میکند شما خرج او رو میدهید زکات فطر او بر شما واجب است ولو کو الان برای خودش مردی شده باشد چون شما خرج او رو میدهید فرض کنیم یک کسی یک دارن حالا بعضیا مستخدمای دارن که با اونها زندگی میکنند حقوق بهش نمیدن با اونها زندگی میکنند کلا خرجش رو همیشه میدن ولو کو طرف مسلمان هم نباشد زکات فطر او بر شما واجب است کسی که برای شما کار میکند زکات فطر بر شما واجب نیست کسی که امپلوی شماست کارگر شماست بر شما واجب نیست و نکته آخرم این که کسی شب عید فد مهمان شما بشود نانخور شما حساب نمیشود اگر کسی شب عید فد مهمان شد و تا فردا مان تا روز بعد و روز عید تا قبل از ظهر روز عید مهمان شما بود او وقت میگن او شخص می شود نانخور شما ولی صرف این که برای افتاری بیاید و بعدم به خانه خودش برود این شخص زکات فطرش برگردن خودش است و برگردن صاحب خانه نیست بیشترم قوانین و شرایطی که داشته باشد فردا شب هم انشاءالله در مورد صحبت خواهیم کرد خلاصه حرف زکات فطر سه کیلوگرم غذای معمول شهر یا جایی که شما زندگی می کنید گفتم به فتوایی که حالا به دفتر تو سیستم اعلام کردن گفتن 10 دلار و میگن بین 10 تا 15 بستگی دارد برای هر نفری پس یک خانواده ای که چهار نفرن او کسی که خرجی خانه رو میدهند باید برای خودش و او سه نفر دیگر زکات فطر رو جمع کند و بدهند صلوات نام There are more rules that I will elaborate more tomorrow night, inshallah. So what I mentioned was pre pretty much uh, what we already know, that the amount of zakat is not monetary value. Zakat al-fit is not money. It's supposed to be paid in the form of food, the staple food of where you live. It could be flour, it could be rice, it could be date, anything that is common with where you live. And for people who, let's say, they don't know someone that they can deliver that food to them, they give the money for someone else or an organization to purchase the food on their behalf and give it to the poor. Or give the money to the poor. 
And the amount of that said is between $10 to $15, depending on what you purchase. Three kilogram of the staple food is 6.7, roughly, 6.7 pound of the staple food. And depending on what you buy, the price fluctuates from, I would say, around $10 to $15. So if you can pay a bit more, go up to 15 person, $15 per person. And there's an obligation on the provider, the breadwinner of the house, to pay for that. Anyone who's paying for the expenses of the household, like food, grocery, shelter, mortgage, that person is responsible to pay for the zakat al fit of anyone who consider his or her dependent. So if you're the mother that you're in charge, you're the breadwinner of the house, is on you. If you're the father, is on you. And it's for anyone that consider your dependent, even if that dependent is not your family, but you're paying for their expenses, you have to pay their zakat al fit on their behalf. Even if that dependent of you is not Muslim, still you have to pay zakat al fit for them as well. 10 to $15 per person. There are more rules that we will elaborate more at another time. This is another salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ibrahim alayhi salam married Hajar, a woman that came from Egypt. And from that marriage, a baby was born that they named him Ismail. And there were a lot of joy and happiness in the household of Ibrahim because after many years, Allah gave Ismail to Prophet Ibrahim at a very old age. And they did not expect it to have a child. Later on, when Ishaq was born, similar, it was born at an old age as well. And we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, وَإِذْ إِبْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salam with many trials. Ibrahim did not just go through fire. Ibrahim didn't go through his uncle rejecting his message. Ibrahim just did not only go through being banished and exiled from his town. Now Ibrahim is tested. Allah told them, Oh Ibrahim, take your wife, Hajar, and take your newborn son, Ismail, to a land that is barren, no vegetation, no trees, no water. Leave them there and trust me. This is a moment of test. You ask me to show you how I revive the dead, how I resurrect the dead. Now is the time that I ask you for something. And this is something to think about. We ask Allah for our needs and hajat. We make requests and demands from Allah. Ya Allah, give me this. Ya Allah, help me here and there. But there are moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I ask you something as well. You call on me, then sometimes I call on you. This dua that we heard that Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi lil iman. This dua is that people, the believers, are the ones who say, Our Lord. We heard, innana sami'na. We people, we heard, munadiyan. We heard the caller. Somebody was calling. Toward what? To what? Lil iman. A caller toward faith and belief and iman. And aminu bi rabbikum. That caller, which is in the case of the Prophet, in our time was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our Prophet was the one calling people. He was saying to believe in God. This Munadi was calling and Aminu Barabbikum to have faith in your Lord. Fa'amanna. Ya Allah, then we believed. Then we listened to the caller and we became believers. Now, Rabbana Faghfir Lana Dhunubana. We listen to you, Ya Allah. Now, hear us. Forgive our sins. 
وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا Resolve our misdeeds and mistakes. وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ And resurrect us with the best of righteous, with those who are truly righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Ibrahim, we listen to you. You ask for signs and we show you the sign. Now we're asking you, O oh Ibrahim, take your wife and son بِوَادٍ غَيْرَ ذِي ذَرْعَ to this barren land. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, which his title is Khalilullah. Khalil means a very close friend, a very intimate friend. Khalilullah means someone whose connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on a different level, that true friendships are tested at the time of difficulty. And we have in our ahadith and narration that do not count on a friend as a friend if they're going to abandon you at the time of hardship. If they're only with you when everything is going well, when you're paying for the bill, when you are the one basically hosting, but the moment you need them, they're always excuses. Once in a while, again, everybody has problems. But that is not a real friend, the one who abandons you at the time of difficulty. Khalilullah, Ibrahim alayhi salam is a friend of Allah, is a friend of Allah that doesn't forget about his bond with Allah at the time of difficulty. Instead, he's even more steadfast and his perseverance is in a different level when he's being tested. Khalilullah. So Ibrahim Khalilullah, the moment he gets the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes his wife Hajar. He talks to her that this is the command of Allah. And Hajar, this pious woman that Allah acknowledges her piety later on, which we will get to. She is as you expect from a mother who is going to be the mother of Ismail. She says, I'm ready. I'm going to be part of this journey with you. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. Let's go. And they take their newborn son to a land that is named Bakka at the time. Later on was known as Makkah. Bi Bakka ta Mubarakan as Quran says. And it's a land, as I said at the time, there is no population. No one lives there. Because usually vegetations and water is a reason for people to settle down in a place. And Mecca didn't have any of those. Even right now when you go to Hajj, even after all these years, it's still Mecca is not known as a city of greenery, vegetation. It still has its own, you see that harsh climate, still is visible. Back then, before the coming of Hajar and Ismail, there's nothing. And we have that Ibrahim brings them and he says his farewell and Allah said you have to leave them on their own. You have to leave. And Ibrahim leaves. And remember, this is a prophet of God. This is not for us. There are people who use this analogy that oh, Allah says this is how you do it. Sometimes I'm going to abandon my family and I go to Hajj, let's say. Allah is great. Allah is going to take care of my family. The same way Allah took care of Ibrahim's family. Please. Do not mistake yourself as Ibrahim. And do not mistake your wife as Hajar. You will get a very hard lesson from life. And secondly, you don't have the right. Because Allah asked Ibrahim to do that. As a prophet of God, he didn't ask average people to do it. For average people, Allah said... You should have istita'at when you go to hajj. Meaning that you should be able to financially afford going to hajj. Meaning that you should have enough money to pay for your expenses of your family while you're going to be absent. If I go to hajj, wajib, obligatory hajj, I cannot just take my family's expenses and their, what they need to survive and go to hajj. That hajj is not valid. It's not even wajib. Istita'at means... Physically, you should be healthy enough to do it. Also means financially, you should be able to afford it. Afford spending as a, as a father, as a husband, you're the provider. You should have enough money 
to provide for the family while you're not there. And secondly, you should have enough money to do the Hajj as well. To pay for the expenses of the Hajj as well. This is when is needed to have wisdom, aql, intellect. Because I hear people listening to one hadith and not thinking about it well enough. That these hadiths are not just copy-paste. They have context, they have application, they have understanding. So if the hadith said do this, it doesn't mean to ignore everything else. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, as a prophet of God, he left his wife and his newborn son Ismail. And we have that some ration of water, Ismail and Hajar. So they start their journey a bit comfortable. She was drinking from the water, nursing the child, everything was going well. Until came the point that there is this heat, there is when you're in a hot climate, you need a lot of water, your body is losing a lot of water. It come to a point that there's no more water. And after a while, Hajar is not able to provide anything for the child, no more nursing possible. So we have, that's the moment a mo mother is desperate. So she has started looking for water. She's searching for water. And in this search of water, we have that, these are in the narrations mentioned, that she sees water in distance near a mountain. So she has started running toward the mountain. And when she gets there, it's a mirage. There's nothing, no water. Thinking that it was water. Then she runs toward another mountain nearby, seeing water nearby. And as she runs toward the other mountain, again, nothing but mirage. And we have that in the hadith said, she ran seven times from one mountain to another. And you may say, why Hajar should run seven times? The first or second time or third time, you know that is a mirage. The answer to that is you should be a mother to know that. That when a mother is desperate, when a mother sees her child in danger, again, there are even theories about this that they say, I don't know how true that is, that a mother who saw a child in a car crash and they lifted the car, there was something that went through them, that a mother lifted the car in order to serve her, save her child. And there is a theory for that as well. A mother is different creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in our teaching, a mother's status, if we like it or not, is higher than a father. It is higher. Father, with all due respect, they have their own position, but a mother has a higher position. Yes, we said, Rabbana qfirli wa li walidayya. Yes, we ask Allah, Rabbi Rahmahuma kama Rabbayani Sagira, Ya Allah have mercy on both of them. But when you look at the Quran, Quran talks about a mother who carries a child for nine months. Qurhan, with difficulty upon difficulty. Quran gives that significance to a mother's struggle. And fathers and husbands, if you don't like it, it is what it is. And when we look at our Prophet, a man, a young man came to Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a sinner. I've done so much wrong in my life that I don't know what to do. I don't think God is going to forgive me. What should I do? Of course, he did repentance himself, but he think, is there anything else I can do to expedite the process of my forgiveness? And Prophet asked him, he said, Young man, tell me, is your mother alive? And he says, no, my mother passed away. He said, how about your father? He said, yeah, my father is alive. He said, go serve him. Go take care of him. Go be at his service. And once he leaves, he looked at his companion and said, I wish his mother was alive. And we have another narration that he asked, Others to go to the grave of their mother and ask the soul of their mother to do the offer them. 
and I don't have time to just talk about this topic because the abundance of our narrations, if not hundreds, there are th if not thousands, there are hundreds of traditions and ahadiths and narrations about this. That's why I said last night, my brother and sister, you should know that a father is a father, a husband is a husband, and a mother is a mother, and a wife is a wife. They have their own unique features. Hajar ran between these two mountains in search of water, nothing. And now suddenly Hajar hears the laughter of his son who's been thirsty all the, all the time, all along. Now he's laughing. So he goes back to Ismail. She goes back to Ismail and she sees and watches and notices. There's water gushing, bursting from the beneath of the feet of Ismail. And the water is so strong and force coming out that in her words she said zam, zam, which in that language translates as a stop, stop, meaning that is enough. That later on that well, that they dug a well next to it, it was a spring, next to that spring they dug a well that is known till this day as zam, zam. But zam, they say in some narration that was the word of Hajar, said so stop. And the water was the beginning of life in Mecca. How they lived through this time, Allah knows that Ismail and Hajar, they stayed in Mecca. They stayed for the rest of their lives in that city. And when people, caravans were passing by, when they would see birds and Animals, because of the water, that was a sign for them that there is water here. They would change the direction and eventually they start settling down by this area where Mecca is. And their tribes by the name of Jurhum and later on other tribes, they move in. And they settle down and establish a city. Which later on, we know it as the city of Mecca. Which is amazing about this story is number one which I would say we should think and reflect upon. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledging desperation, the effort of a mother. That two mountains that Hajar ran to from one to another is Safa and Marwa. The mountain of Safa has been said is called Safa is because where Ibrahim alayhi salam was demoted from the heaven and Adam is assalamu alaykum Adam as Allah. the Safa is the root of the word of Adam alayhi named after him Safa the chosen one and Marwa them some again these are some opinions that come because of the Hawa this is the first place on earth that was inhabited by humans the first humans Adam and Hawa and Marwa was originally Mar'a, which means women. And these two mountains, Allah referred to them as Inna Safa wal Marwata min Sha'irillah. Faman Hajj al Bayt, Awa Tamara Fala Junah Alayhi Ayyat Tawa Fabihima. Indeed, these two mountains, Safa and Marwa, they're icons, they're banners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sha'air Allah, two mountains. And when you perform the hajj, is a requirement by all Muslim that you have to do sa'i, you have to walk between these two mountains seven times. You start from Safa and you finish at Marwa. And there is an area which you must do harwala, which is they have a, now I think Recently they did a light before it was a sign on the floor. Now there's a light that is recommended, is not required, is recommended to kind of jog fast, sprint a bit. And I said again, it goes back to, that was the moment to go through the desperation of Hajar when she sprinted. Allah acknowledging the sacrifice of Hajar. She is the one. 
Yes, Ibrahim did one sacrifice. Because Allah said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will never get to the meaning of being good and righteousness unless you give from what you love the most. And if you would have asked Ibrahim at that time, a, a father who's been waiting all along for a child, who he would love the most in the face of earth, at that one would have been his son, would have been his, his family. And Allah asked him to start with him. But now, Hajar has her own journey, has her own test. We don't see that in the words of Hajar, there's complaining, or God forbid, they're saying a, a word that is frustration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah acknowledges that. And later on, it's not, we're not going to stop here. We see the footsteps of Ibrahim, Ismail, Hajar in many parts of our Hajj. Pilgrimage, when we go, we see them all, all, all over. When we go to the house of God, Kaaba, there is this short wall near Kaaba which is known as Hijr Ismail. It's an area that, as I said, when you do Hajj, you have to go around it. You cannot go inside. It's open. It has an entrance and exit from both sides. But you cannot go inside. Your, your tawaf will be invalid if you go inside. You have to go around it. Hijr Ismail is known as Hijr Ismail. And it's been mentioned in our tradition, this is where Hajar and Ismail settled down the first time. This is where they lived and eventually, this is where they were buried. That area is where Hajar and Ismail are buried, in Hijr Ismail. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acknowledgement of his great servants. And it comes a time that after all this representation of their sacrifices, Ibrahim alayhi salam get the permission to go back to them. So Ibrahim is checking on them, but he's not moving in permanently. He's going back and forth. He come, come from Palestine, he check on them, and then he goes back. It's a long journey. But when you look at Ibrahim's journey, we see he's a man that's going to be Millat Abikum. He's going to be the father of nations. So it means father of nations. If you're going to have your children establishing Societies around the world, one is going to be in Palestine, Isaac and Ishaq, and another one is going to be in Ismail. And later on we see that they how they are reconnected. In one of these trips when he comes back to Mecca, comes to see his son and his wife. Now this is a time that Ismail is a young man. This is a time that he's someone that can stand by his father's side and help him. This is the moment that fathers enjoy the most, right? That this is a time that you've been looking forward for a time that you'll be able to do things with your son. That is the moment that Allah said, Ibrahim, be ready for another test. And there are lessons to be learned from that part of this story, which we will get to, inshallah tomorrow night. But this part of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it focuses on number one, mother's relationship with the child. And we see the bond between Ismail and his mother to the point that he stays with his mother all the way to the moment that they leave this dunya. Uh, how Allah honors a mother. And I want to say, be careful. Motherhood is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But like everything else, People take everything to extremes, as Imam Ali salam said, La aral jahila, jahila mufritan aw mufarrata. Ignorance are the one who are always excessive or they're negligent. Always. They, they take it too far. They're polarized in their approach. And in this case, there are those who said, you know, what, what is a woman? Only a woman is a being a mother. That's it. That's one extreme, that a mother doesn't have her own identity. Oh, you're not a mother? It's this sense of disappointment. Of, again, if this person, can, for whatever reason, cannot be a mother. Let's say there was not an opportunity to get married. 
Are we going to look down on that person because they didn't become a mother? It wasn't on them. It wasn't their choice. Or there are people who cannot have kids. Are we going to criticize them for them, something that they have no control over? Look down upon them? Being a mother is a great gift of Allah, but the same way as a gift of Allah, Allah give it and wants accountability. If Allah doesn't give it, who, who we are to judge Allah's decision? And remember, there are pious women who never had kids. Righteous women who did not have kids. Fatima Ma'asuma, salamullah alayha. She's buried in the city of Qom. Our ulama said one of the source of barakah from Allah is that she is the one that is the wasila between us and Allah. She never got married. She passed away in the city of Qom and she buried. She was buried there. No child, no marriage. Can we say that she's not close to Allah because she, was, she never become a mother? It's a matter of people's journey. If they decide not to get married, if they're deciding to prioritize their career over the being a mother, that's a different story and they know. That's not something that Islam says is a good idea. But sometimes it's not their choice, it's not their call. A person cannot become a mother unless they get married. They cannot become a mother unless biologically there are no obstacles. That's one extreme. The extreme of, oh, if you're not a mother, God forbid you're not good enough. And then we have the other extreme. Being a mother is all just a headache, is a waste of time. What is being a mother? You're gonna do all the work and somebody else take the credit and that's it. Work on yourself, get a career, and take away the sacredness of being a mother. Because somebody is a mother and they are raising a family, taking care of a family. God forbid they're being labeled as, oh, you? You have no career? You don't have a job? And look down upon them for that. Both are problems. Both of these approaches are problems. A woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her many blessings. Among those blessings is that is, she is going to be the one that has said, Al Jannatu Tahta Aqdami Ummahatikum. If they have a chance to become a mother, it's a gift from Allah. But who has the right to ask that question? No one. Wala tajassasu, Quran says. Do not investigate in people's lives. If someone has a kid or don't have a kid, let them be. Wala tajassasu. Oh, everything is okay. All due respect, if that person cannot say it, I say it on their behalf. None of your business. Why? It's such a personal matter, we don't understand boundaries. But my intention is khair, I'm trying to help, please. Some friendships are the friendships, again we have a saying, dustiya khala khair, says a friendship of a bear. We have a man and a bear, we're friends. This is a Farsi folktale. So they were very, very close friends. Again, not a real story. Please do not quote me on this. It's a <laughs> mythical story to just carry a lesson, hopefully, moral. And we have that one day this man was sleeping, and a fly was disturbing him. He was in the middle of his nap, tried to get rid of the fly, and this bear wanted to help. So he picked up a big boulder and smashed the fly with the head of the guy at the same time. They said this called it that being a bear friend. Do see a stop. If you don't know how to be friendly by investigating, by asking things that you're not supposed to, please don't. There are so many things that they are personal. They already go through enough. Do you think, okay, let's say somebody didn't get married for whatever reason. You're asking them over and over and over why they're not married is gonna solve the problem? Is that your solution? Do you think that they just, you know, been in coma and they just woke up and suddenly they needed you to keep them updated with their life? They know. But we don't know what they're going through. The best approach would be, how can I help? Is there anything I can do? In general, if you need someone to talk to, let me know. 
You have a brother here. You have a sister here. And the story of Ibrahim السلام, has so much to learn. This is one of them. That the mother is a sacred, is a holy status. Do not exchange it with anything else. But if somebody, for whatever reason, Allah did not mean it for them, as it was for Hazrat Fatima Ma'asuma Salamu Alaiha, do not look at yourself as less of a person. Do not look at yourself as less of a woman. Trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and trust His wisdom. And know that anyone will be tested according to what Allah provided for them. If Allah gave you the means, then there will be accountability. If you didn't have the means, Ya Allah, I didn't have it. Otherwise, it would have been different. Ilahi ridhan bi Ya Allah, we're pleased with what you're pleased with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the honor of Ibrahim, by the honor of Ismail, by the honor of the descendant of these great prophets of God, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And his progeny and family, Ahlul Bayt, grant all of us a wisdom, an aql, an intellect, and a knowledge that show us the right path, that help us to recognize falsehood and the truth from one another. And may Allah accept our efforts in these final days of the month of Ramadan as we're getting to the end of this month. May Allah accept our efforts, help us to be as sincere as we can in doing these good things. And may Allah make the Eid al fitr that is upon us to be a day of liberation, a day of freedom from our sins, from our mistakes, from our past to a new beginning for a clean slate and from a new connection and a stronger connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. For the soul of all marhumin, for the marhumin maghfura, ma'asum abdul wahid, please recite Surah Fatiha with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Okay, one of our brothers, inshallah, by the name of Abu Haydar, wants to recite something. I will ask him to come forward and recite, inshallah. I listened to his recitation before. May Allah, inshallah, tayyib Allah and fasik, give him more tawfiqat. We will listen with another salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. No, 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 it's just night, night. True. It's night. Allah, Muhammad, Allah. Allah, 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 صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء صلى الله عليك وعلى جدك وأبيك وأمك وأخيك والتسعة المعصومين من بني يا رحمة الله الواسعة يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ما خاب والله من تمسك بكم وأمنا من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا يا كنا معكم 
فنفوز فوزا عظيما أرى الأيام تسرع في خطاها وهذا العمر يمضي بارتحالي فموت ثم قبر فموت ثم قبر ثم اللجوء إلى رب العبادي يا حادث رعم مشاياك على لسان السيدة زينب مواساة ورحمة للمرحومة اللي اجتمعنا لأجلها المرحومة معصومة عبد الواحد رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة تسبقها الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد إن واسيها بمجلس زينب ومصيبة زينب وكل المصائب دون مصيبة زينب تهون تقول لي يا حادث رعم مشاياك ومر بينا على والينا تطشر بالحواف الراح خل اللم بوسكينا شفنا الدم على التربايان وصبعة وطايحة عينا من كثر البكي والنوح شهقة بعد ما بينا يا حادي ومر على العباس بالكولن يفزلين عايت بالكفال ونقل للنوب ذلينا وين الرد نظر يعقوب يرد للقمر تشفينا ويرد لعيون خلي يشوف السوى الحبل بيدي أنا يا, يا, يا حادش ما يا أركبها تطيح طفعنا من النور هزي لطفا هزي فوق يا الحادي وعلينا ما شوف تلو كانت نوقنا هيبة محمية وهوادج فوق هسه بلا غطى وناوي بين الطب يا حاد بسوق أتستر بعد بما عباية وصفت كل حروب ويا حادي بعد ما بينا لو على طبة الديوان وحدة بوحدة قمنا اللوذ تدرم خدر النسوان صرنا بعين كل الشايام أبد ما تشايان بالحسبان وصفة مخدرة عباس تاليب ولية العدوان أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات العلماء والشهداء من مات على الإيمان أرواح الموتى الحاضرين والسامعين 
وبالخصوص إلى روح من اجتمعنا لأجلها رحم الله والديه من قرأ سورة الفاتحة قبلها صلوات وعجل اللهم في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان السلام عليك يا رسول الله يا نبي الله يا خير خلق الله يا خاتم النبيين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين ويا إمام المتقين علي بن أبي طالب السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليكم يا الحسن يا الحسين سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد الشباب أهل الجنة أجمعين السلام على علي بن الحسين زين العابدين السلام على محمد بن علي باقر علم النبيين السلام على جعفر بن محمد الصادق السلام على موسى بن جعفر الكاظم السلام على علي بن موسى الرضا المرتضى السلام على محمد بن علي التقي الجواد السلام على علي بن محمد الهاد النقي السلام على حسن بن علي العسكري الزكي السلام عليك يا صاحب الزمان يا خليفة الرحمن يا إمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين